You're telling me girls had a sexual awakening with the big cat? Yeah. We have daddy issues in America. <laughs> that we do. Oh. That we do. That is, I, I, would, I would love to know the, the numbers on that. That we do. Let's go home. Welcome back to Wild Till Nine. I have unlocked a new fear in many people as of today. Me included? Uh, actually, no. Okay. So today, um, I haven't been able to enjoy the experience of biting into an apple, oh. a corn of cob, a yeah. juicy pear, since I was the mere age of 12. When did I get braces? Wait, have you really stopped biting into apples? Yes. Okay. I chop those bitches up every time, like my orthodontist told me to when I was in grade seven. You do. You did. <laughs> like now that you've said this, yeah. I agree. Have you ever seen me bite into an apple? No. Same with Sorry. corn. Like a freaking loser, I take a knife to it and saw off the side. I have to turn it and saw and turn it and saw my corn off um, because. When you get braces, obviously like they tell you not to do that cause you'll, you could break them. But then post braces, they adhere with like a bond cement, dental cement situation, this little wire behind your front four teeth on the bottom and the top. You don't have that though, do you? I don't. That's so whack. Yeah. When did you stop wearing your retainer? Well, so I actually had to go through the worst possible timeline. Cause like dudes stop growing a little bit later than, than women. We know. So, right. Mentally, physically. And, and physically. Yeah, we know, so like, we know. I had to hold the space that my new tooth. That's right. Is new. The tooth that I got implanted in yes. until I was like well into 19. I was like 19 and a half. That's why you're so charismatic. I, I, liter I literally was, I think either already in community college or about to enter community college. Yeah. I was 19. Without a tooth still with a mouthful of like orthodontic shit. Although by that time, it's like the, the retainer that has the fake tooth on it that just has the wire in front. Oh. Yeah, yeah. So like- Oh wait, you, that's great. Kind of. So- No, that's a sleigh. It is, but you can't really eat with it. Right. So first dates, a little weird. Hmm. Fortunately, I wasn't really going on any at the time, so. Oh, okay, yeah. I see, I see. So anyways, yeah, I- I had to rely on my personality. It wasn't great. No, I think that builds character. Exactly. I think everyone should have to have braces for a little bit I, or like something, you know what I mean? Like like some mm. growth development period. Um, you can't just be hot and rich. No, you can't just be hot and rich and smart and funny and successful. Like you, you just can, can't have all of them. But then, you know. Yeah. So anyway, so I got my braces off the summer between grade eight and going to high school. And so that's when I, how old are you then? Like. 14? We don't have grade eight. We have eighth grade, but grade you eight. Fuck. Uh, what, like 13, 14? 13, 14, somewhere yeah. in that. So anyways, I have had this bar, these two bars on my teeth for the last 16 years. And I've broken the bottom one a few times man. eating like random things. Um, and I've just got like the bond re well, put on. I feel like every other week I get the, oh my God. And then, <laughs> I, <laughs> and then I just pop it back into place and I go about my day. Go, Never mind. We're fine. False, We're false fine. alarm. We're fine. Um, so anyway, I feel like I've loosened it and then I've broken it off a few times. And so I've gotten the bottom one and my top one, chilling. 16 years, she is coasting. Well, she is cool, calm, collected. She is solid. She's in there until today. She gave up. She called it quits. She, <laughs> she said, said no I'm more. Not, I'm not holding on to this anymore. No more. I I'm don't want to be it. here. I don't want to do this anymore. And I bit into, and again, chopped piece of apple, not off the core. And it just, exited my mouth. I pulled it out with my fingers. You go, oh my God. And this time was real. This time was real. I didn't believe it 1%. Yeah, you're like, you're like, you need to, what, like, what's that? What do you, what's, what's it? I, and then all of a sudden my wire was in my hand. It's kind of, yeah. It's kind of crazy to think about the fact that it's been with you. I flossed over for the half. first time in six, well, no, hang on. Let Wait, me, hold on, what? Me, hang on, hang on, hang on. I flossed all the way up my tooth for the first time in 16 years. Wait, so when you today. floss, you don't even get to the bottom? You do get to the bottom, but you have to go like around the wire. You don't do that, do you? Yes, of course I do. Are you Lauren, kidding? It's just me and you. No one else is here. Of course I do. Lauren, it's just you and me. I will shove a little, uh, the, the brace friendly floss pick tooth up your butt. What's weird is I don't know where those would be in our house. What do you mean? They're in the little glass container, literally next to all my shit. Okay. They're green. I, 
I believe you. Hey, listen, just because you don't pay attention to your fiance. Um, when you're flossing halfway down the tooth and I'm flossing all the way, I no, I'm not. I'm not really paying. But regardless, I don't I don't you really think you're Do flossing. You expose that you're a floss licker again? No, I don't. I don't need to go through that trauma. <laughs> but I do think that that at that I'm almost positive that's the reason I didn't get the bar. Cause he was like, flossing sucks with the bar. It's, flossing a, it's does a pain suck in the with ass. The bar. But yeah. there's no world where a regular orthodontist wouldn't have either sent you home with retainers or the- I had retainers. Oh, you just stopped wearing them. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. I see. I mean, I wore them for years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then- I lost them. Lost them? Yeah. Okay. Like, but actually, no, I have one in LA, but it's not Here? going to fit. Yeah, I do. Ew. I know exactly where it is. Oh my God. It does not fit my You mouth. call me a hoarder. What? That's gotta go. Okay, fine. Maybe it takes up a, a third of an inch. I don't know. No, like that's three gotta, inches. That's gotta go, babe. I feel like I'm keeping it just to like show at some point, hey, like this is where we left off. Right. Pick up from here. Right, 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 right. Yeah. So anyways, uh, add that to the pre-wedding to-do list. Um, get rebarred? Is, is to get, well, no, I think that I'm going to just have them take off yeah. the cement bond thingies because they are ripping out my, ripping up my tongue right now because it's just like such a weird- Oh, they're still there. Yeah, they're still there. Ugh. I have four mountainous blobs of cement on the back of my teeth. It's I will awful. say a little nub on the inside of your mouth feels like a mountain. Feels like a mountain. It does. No, I'm, I'm, and so anyways, I posted a photo of it and you would not believe how many people replied. Um, my most viewed story in weeks. <laughs> I'm give, fair, giving the people what they want. Every single person who watches you, for the most part, has teeth. Right, And okay. a lot of them have problems. I, I, like, I wonder what percentage, what percentage of people have braces? I mean, it, regardless, Huge. regardless of like whether they have braces, the amount of people who could use braces whether they have them or not, a lot. Yeah, but I, I really do think that like more than half, uh, like I, maybe not half the population, maybe in LA, are walking around with these metal bars behind their well, teeth. And so I would not, you, I couldn't believe how many people today I invoked a new fear with it. Like, so they have one and they never thought about it falling off? Yeah, they're like, oh, oh. my God, new fear unlocked. What if I swallow it? Oh, I used to have this thing called a, a, a upper and lower lingual arch that like makes your like actual, like the your mouth. Ooh, is that like, thing you had to crank open? Like to like widen the whole thing. It like made my mouth bigger. Yeah. I, I'm pretty sure. Like make more space. I could be so wrong. Anyway, that thing uh -huh. was like suctioned up to the top of your, like the roof of your mouth. Yeah. But every once in a while it would become unsuctioned and it would yeah. feel like it's about to just enter your throat. Oh, that's a no for me. It never did. That's a no for but me. But I always thought it was going to. I'm just so nervous for when I have to go to the dentist appointment to go get a retainer made because that's what they're gonna wanna do is give me a retainer, which I do need because I clench my jaw and Botox injections in my TMJ muscles into my masseter muscles <laughs> are not enough to stop the clenching. I don't grind, but I clench. I have good news, Lauren. Head on over to ZocDoc and they- I booked my appointment through ZocDoc! When I tell you that I'm now, I have been- Just a walking ZocDoc ad. I've been a, a casual ZocDoc fan. Yeah. I am now lifer. So anyways, what I wanna say though, is that I feel like <laughs> anyone who's ever had braces has trauma from that mouth tray where you have to make impressions and Ooh. it's that mold of pink goo that yeah. you have to- the gags that I have gagged with that in my mouth. Oh my God. It, I think it's a, it would be weird if you didn't gag with that thing. Oh, I'm dreading it. I'm literally gonna have nightmares. Like, I, you know what though? I was like, you know what? I, let me just knock this out Wait, before you, the wedding. What day are you going? Tuesday. I might move my, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do whitening. I'll move my whitening appointment to them. Oh my God, come with me. We can go together. That's so nice. You can hold my hand. You can hold my hand as I gag. I'm just like, okay, has the Wait, tech- Wait, Tuesday? Yeah. What time? One. So close. What time are you? 11. I'll call him. Oh yeah, just see if you can move back. Yeah. I well, just babe, feel, we do everything together. That's so nice. I just feel like we've got to be able to move past the pink goo mold, right? Like there's got to be a way to just like x-ray this shit and make it 3D, like 3D print it. No, are we not there yet? I mean, pro okay, here's the deal. I think we probably are. Yeah. You just don't want to see the bill for it. No, I think I do. Oh, damn, what's that? What's it like? I think I do. There are some things that are worth the money and that pink tray of goo holds so much trauma for me. We can have a little dentist date on Tuesday. That's so nice. Maybe, That's maybe. That's so nice. We don't, we don't actually, but also like I couldn't be in less, I, I hate my Tuesday appointment. I have to go back for my second whitening. I would rather do whitening than gag on goo. I'd rather gag on goo. You so would rather gag on goo? Yeah, because gag on goo doesn't have like 48 hour pain. Mentally? 
Yes, it does. Right. Longer than 48 hours. But physically. Lifetime of pain. Anyway, so you're gonna go get, so you're gonna get both of them taken off? Yeah, I think so. Okay. The bottom, the bottom one's loose. It's just a matter of time. I knocked it off with a piece of broccoli. And, and you know what though? What, How much I, broccoli what are you I'm eating? gathering from this? Bitch, how much broccoli are you eating? Don't you come for my vegetable consumption? You haven't eaten a vegetable in days. I was simply asking a question. How much broccoli <laughs> are you consuming? Probably a couple times a week. Okay, that's great. Yeah, anyways, I bit into a piece of broccoli and knocked the bottom bar off. And so what I'm gathering from all of this is that I'm off produce because it is just harming me. I've, by the I'm way, constipated welcome. and my bars are falling off. Welcome, I've been off anything green <laughs> For 20 years, see, it's done see? nothing but good things. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, we're, I mean, we're, we're changing our entire diet starting next week. Yeah, I mean, nothing crazy. We're just switching meal plans. We'll see how it goes. Yeah, we'll see how it goes. Uh, so Jeremy disappeared this weekend for more than 48 hours. I did, I did. That was maybe one of the most fucked things you've ever done. <laughs> <laughs> What's funny is as I was explaining to people what the plan was. They're like, so like, what does Lauren think? I said, she doesn't yet. What do you mean? I haven't told her. The way that we had tickets to a musical. Okay, if you wanna go ahead and provide some context. Okay, so we're laying in bed on Friday night, yes. 2 a.m. So coming into Saturday. Right. Jeremy's high out of his mind. Like so high accidentally from edibles that he can't move. He's looking at me, frozen. Can't even watch TikToks. Like that's how high this man is. He's. So barely there, it's mm. crazy. I will say- I've never seen you so high. I, I don't know if I've ever seen anyone so high. So I don't, I don't smoke. I don't like it. It's not my thing. I don't like smoking. Yeah. It's it just, there's some, I don't know if it's a taste thing. I don't know if it's a throat. I, I don't it's enjoy- It's a taste thing for me. I don't enjoy smoking. Even vapes, it's not my thing. The burn, the burn feel and taste for me is- Yeah. So, but I don't, I don't dislike um, a little gummy before I sleep. Oh, a little gummy. Or a couple gummies, or just straight up a uh, handful of gummies. Yeah. So anyway, you know, tomato, tomato. Point is, I had a double serving of what would normally, as a single serving, put me down regardless. Yeah. And I forgot that I hadn't really given Lauren any indication that I was not going right. to be home the next day, or the next day, or most of the following day. Right. Three days until after it had really already hit me. Right. And so I, it, like, I would say like just a wave of, of overwhelming anxiety hit me in the face at the same time that mm -hmm. I also wasn't like really capable of even saying Anything. a sentence. And so I had to explain to her that I wasn't going to explain to her why I was going to be gone the next few days and that she was just going to have to go with it. And that seemed like I was going to have to like disprove the theory of relativity in French upside down. Yeah in seven seconds yeah, to everyone in the world. Yeah. How'd I do? Not great. Okay. Not great. Okay. Not great. You, um, I don't think gave me enough appreciation for how chill and, and, and fine I, can, I am. I can assure you, I didn't give you or anything else much appreciation at that point. So for context, I've, I've been working on a little surprise for the wedding. Scheming. I've He's been scheming. scheming. And it didn't involve your participation. It uh -huh. doesn't involve your participation. Right. It won't involve your participation. Uh -huh. I just need you to not get in the way of it until the day of. Right. And so I had planned on, I think, breaking the news to you a little bit more eloquently, but I, I, know, I know better than to give you time. I can't give you time to ask questions. Yeah. Unfortunately, the only way to surprise you is to give you this no option scenario. Mm -hmm. You cannot... Think about other how, wait, but, but, um, uh, cause Lauren would well, like, but like, when will you be back? And where are you, like, will you be going far? Will I still be able to, to contact you? Um, Which are I, all incredibly valid questions. I just want to say. You know, those are all valid, but <laughs> yeah. it would be followed by like 15 more that like, you don't need to ask that you would. And then you'd also try and ask people that you'd think I would tell, mm -hmm. which you probably already did. Um, but yeah, it, uh, I'm back. So Jeremy's been scheming. And so he had to like, I, I was talking about this on the vlog today, which is because I was just like, where and why would you have to go somewhere physically to physically be there? Cause it's not like you're going to like some crazy tailor to like mm. get like a fancy suit or something. Like as I've been obviously like weighing my options of like I mean, what this scheming could be. Could be a second outfit. Yeah, but I don't think you would be so intense about a surprise about it. Well, you haven't seen the outfit. If but that okay. was the, if okay. that was the outfit. What, what else? Um, uh, by the way, I already know the things you've 
thought it's been that you've bounced off your friends that are incorrect. Like I already know, I already know all the things you think it is. What do I think it is? Well, I can tell you right now, Leroy Sanchez is not singing. No, that's not it. But you did ask that. Yeah, I asked that months ago. I didn't ask that in the last 48 that's hours. That's the most like, that's the funniest one to me. Yeah. That's well, like, that's like hilarious to me that you would think that I would, anyway, regardless. But also that wouldn't make sense if you have to fly somewhere. Cause Leroy, Leroy lives right. here. It wouldn't make any sense. Yeah, exactly. No, that, that, that hasn't been a single option in my mind this past weekend. Yeah, I just think, I, I find it funny when you know that you're not really supposed to ask any more questions, but all you want to do is ask more questions. Yeah, of course. Yeah, you're like not a great person at just going with the surprise. No, I'm not a great go Even with the other flow. people's surprises. Like Mia was surprising the other day and you were like, so like, babe, do you know what I'm doing? I'm like, I do. Okay, like, so like- where, No, okay, what, I just um, feel, I just feel like it is a totally normal and fair question to be like, if you know what I'm doing, can I show you my outfit and you can tell me yes or no, this is appropriate. That is so fucking way, tame. Totally. You are dragging me right now. And I have every, 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 every reason to say, no, I don't want to. I'm not going to spoil the surprise. Cause I- Well, the, why does that spoil the surprise? I don't, okay. On behalf of anxious people. Yes. Like, like uh, what if, the whole surprise gets ruined because I'm wearing a totally wrong outfit and I'm cold and don't have the right footwear. But if I thought that there was a world where your outfit could be the one and only variable uh -huh. that would ruin the whole thing, mm -hmm. maybe I would have had a different answer. Hang on, that, that still doesn't that still doesn't justify why you would be like, yes, this is appropriate or no, it's appro not appropriate. Because then it, 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 it signals to you, once you know something, uh -huh. it's like, okay, great. Now that I know that, what can I, what can I pull from that? I am so not on the same page as you with this. I know, but you're also really, really difficult at surprising. And you just have to, I, I've, I've learned. The only way to surprise you is to make sure everyone in your life that you love, care, and trust all lies to you at the same time. <laughs> and you know what's funny? Everyone seems really, really <laughs> open to so doing it. You are so good at it. Not only, like, not only good, but like, there's not much pushback at all. Everyone's like, that's a great idea. Yeah, we should do that. That's good. I think that we should give Lauren her flowers for how she handled Thank the situation. Thank you so much. But, okay. Do, oh, okay. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Let's, okay. Oh, no. Yeah, like let's, let's, lay, let's lay out the scene here. Most girls would not be chill with their fiance so close to a wedding planning, like and just dipping out for three days, no contact, mm -hmm. no location, mm -hmm. no, no idea who you're with, where you're staying, what you're doing. Yep, all of it. Like all of it. That, that's most girls would not allow that. Well, when the time comes and the wedding happens, if the surprise hang on, hang on, hang no, on, no, no, hang no, on. no, yeah. we're no, just trying no. to give Lauren her flowers. You're gonna be like, yes, babe. Yes. You're the best. Thank you for taking Thank it you. so well. I know. Thank you for being chill. I, you were chill. Yeah, you were chill. Thanks. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> you are welcome for being. Well, a just real quick, real quick. What? What were you gonna do? What do you mean? What are we Some do? girls would blow your shit up the entire weekend. Probably like, just turn the phone off. <laughs> Block. Listen, if it wasn't for a good cause, I'd feel you more. I really would. But like, I'm like, I, I know, the, I know the plan is. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. Ever wonder what could make your life truly fulfilling? You had more time, what would you use it on? For me, it's the Throne of Glass series that is currently taking over my life. But finding what sparks joy in you can be a game changer and therapy can help uncover that. Therapy is an asset to add to your life. It helps you learn positive coping skills and how to set boundaries and it empowers you to be the best version of yourself. Therapy is like another version of self-care, but for your mind. Therapy's taught me to truly value the things that I want out of life and just makes me a happier person. Amen. Enter BetterHelp, an online therapy platform that's convenient and tailored to your needs. Sign up, match with a licensed therapist, and start navigating towards a happier you. And if you want to switch therapists, it's easy and free. Learn to make time for what makes you happy with BetterHelp. That's my line. So sorry. Learn to make time <laughs> for, what's for what makes you happy with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash WT9 today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp. H-E-L-P dot com -E slash W-T-9. So anyways, Jeremy has returned. Hi, and I'm back. you made one rookie mistake in all of this. Go on. And I didn't look into it because I don't want to ruin the surprise. You left your bag tags on your luggage. I know I did. 
and I did not Google the flight code. Wouldn't have mattered. Here I go then Googling away. Wouldn't have mattered. Why wouldn't it have mattered? Because that was one flight. Hmm. Lauren, come on. Hmm. You don't think I'm that simple. Hmm. <laughs> I don't know. I think you're covering your tracks. I assure you. One flight. I think you're covering your tracks. Did you, did you search it? No, I didn't. Okay. I didn't want to ruin the surprise. Well, there you go. I mean, if you wanted to ruin the surprise, you can. No. By doing what? Just shit like that. That's why I didn't do it. Right. But even if you had, it wouldn't ruin the surprise. But you just said doing that would ruin the surprise. No, but like doing things like that would ruin the surprise. I'm telling you right now, you could have done that. It would not have ruined the surprise. I thought about this. Hmm. Sorry. Anyway, it was a great weekend. I'm so glad. Actually, it was a stressful as fuck weekend, but it was good. It's done. I'm so glad. Like I, I genuinely, if I had it to do over a thousand times, not sure I would do this, but I'm glad I did it already. Well, I'm glad I'm closer to getting it done than I was a week ago. Wahoo. <laughs> Fucking wahoo indeed. Wahoo. What? what? No, I can't I can't ask any questions, so I, I don't know. You can I, ask me questions. No, no, I'm not going to. Okay. I'm not going to. Um, but you want to. No, I don't. I, no, I actually don't even want to touch your surprise. Okay. That's cool. So there is this TikTok trend right now. Um, it's... I don't know if there's a, uh, an official name. It's like the hear me out trend. Okay. And so I'm hoping that I do this out properly. Essentially, it's like the, who's your like, but hear me out person. So it, it <laughs> okay, maybe maybe we just show the first TikTok. Okay. Um, to give some context. It's like the hear me out, who's maybe kind of a little hot, whether it be a personality or like an essence about them. Or if you squint your eyes and tilt your squint, squint. Squint your eyes and tilt your head a little bit. Okay. So they're like, just hear me out though. These are the guys that, that do it for me. Okay. Th that was it? Okay, so there's lots, there's lots. That was just the warm up. Cause I feel like Scar, like like lots of girls probably had like a sexual awakening with Scar. The, 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 the lion. cat? The, the, yeah. The big cat. Yeah, the big cat. You're telling me girls had a sexual awakening with the big cat? Yeah. We have daddy issues in America. <laughs> that we do. That we do. That is, I, I would, I would love to know the, the numbers on that. That we do. Yeah. Um. Okay. So there's like the original tweet. Okay. See, like that one makes sense. Okay. So for people who don't have a visual help here, uh, what I'm seeing, uh, the uninitiated, is uh, okay. The, Teenage goofy, I think. Yes. So, ha walk me through this. So girls are like, okay, but like, hear me out though. Okay. And it's like, whoa, look at a teenage Goofy though. Okay, so are you, are you sexually <laughs> interested in teenage Goofy? No, I'm not. Personally for me, this one's not for me. Okay, but- But- You see it. Someone, someone- You see it. What? You see it. I see how it could be for someone else. So you see it. <laughs> so I see it. So you see it. What do you see? Walk me through it. I see a nice young man with charisma, oh. uniqueness, nerve and talent. <laughs> Serving. Oof. Don't uh, worry, we'll, we'll bleep it and we'll cover your mouth. <laughs> thank you. Um, okay, so, so you're telling me that there's a part of you that understands why someone else yes. could see a still image of teenage Goofy. No, but it's like, it's from the show. This right. is like, it's like a, like the nostalgia childhood when you like, when younger girls would watch the show, they'd be like, oh, I've got a crush on teen Goofy. Right, okay, got it. Yeah. What else? Man in a yellow hat? Huh? From what? Oh my God, <gasps> Curious George? Oh, you know what? I didn't, it's not that I didn't, like, I know Curious George is, don't get me wrong. Yeah? I don't have the connection with Curious George. Oh my God. I've, okay, yeah, I, I know. You know I hate monkeys, but Curious George might be the exception. That, see, I've, now this is the news to me. I've actually thought about doing this as a Halloween costume for you and I. And I'm the monkey? Or I'm the man in yellow. Wait, what do you think, Jeremy? <laughs> Not sure. <laughs> I mean, listen, if you want to be the monkey, you can be the monkey, Thank but you. I always pictured you man in yellow hat. Well, okay, so what was the, the significance of the man in the yellow hat? He was just like the, I don't know if it, it wasn't, it was like, maybe he's like adoptive dad, maybe? Curious George? Anyway. Curious George was adopted? Well, well this guy definitely isn't the father. 
biologically. Listen. How do we know that? <laughs> Got it. Okay, so there's there's some semblance of, of reality in this cartoon. For? I just feel like there's only so many adoption stories that I are feel cartoons. Like, I feel like we're not, I feel like we're not still, and we're not fully there on the hear me out trend. R- right. Okay, I Comprehension. Think, I think it's because, um, Jeremy, when I get these on my feed, uh-huh. this is maybe telling you too much, is <laughs> I don't get animated characters. So you my, get Travis Kelsey. No, but um, who's beating, not attractive? About to beat the shit out of that one guy. No, but Travis like, Kelsey yeah, wouldn't be in this trend because lots of girls too, find him so, conventionally attractive. Right, I, but but when he's um about to assault mad, somebody, yeah. yeah. Hear okay, me out. Hear me out. He's in the middle of the Super Bowl. Anyways, <laughs> mine mine would be like this tweet: "Who's y'all's craziest?" Hear me out, and then the next one would be like a picture of Dave Portnoy. Wow. Right. Right. And it's right. like you know, listen. And just out of curiosity, yeah. show where do you sit? Where do you stand on that? Um, listen, Miss I, Peaches he's, is he's winning really single, right? The hearts, so. yes. Miss Peaches is winning single handedly, winning so, the hearts of all the women across him being America. Recently single is I'll the go, reason that that might be a green door, a green green flag. Well, just to be respectful. No, Got I would it. never say that. Totally. You know, if he was still with his girl. Totally, but now that he's not. Now that he's not. Okay, this just brings a couple questions up for me. Uh huh. If you had to say, oh, Tino Tonatini from the Weekenders. <laughs> Show if you wouldn't mind, not that I don't know what that is. I just want to know what my- <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to need that again and slow down. Um, you know what's actually crazy too is, so it's it's Tino uh-huh. Tonatini in The Weekenders. <laughs> For me? Oh my God. <laughs> what? I, hold it, on. Was, it was Tino Tonatini. I haven't seen me. it yet. I just- <laughs> And then I have a second one. I have a second one actually. No, by the way, no one's asked for the second one yet. Um, you just hold it right there. You're so okay. weird because I've never dated a guy with blonde hair. Okay, just a couple questions. Yeah, go ahead. Um, I'm gonna skip past the why at the, the, the highest level and just say, if you had to boil it down to one characteristic, yeah, what is it? I truly don't remember anything about him, mm. but I do remember that it was Tina Tonatini and it always has been. Always will be. Listen, I. I'm not gonna sit here and get in the way of that. I understand, yeah. I get it. What What are yours? What are yours? Hear me out. <sighs> I feel like everyone likes Shigo from um, The Fairly Odd Parents. Didn't, uh, that wouldn't have done it for me. Um, but I, I think I, I definitely always gravitated towards evil women. Hmm. Yeah. We, we need can, an example. We can, well. Pre- preferably anime. Like Cruella de Vil? No, cause she was gross. Um, She's gross. Yzma? Also gross. <laughs> <laughs> Ursula like, from The Little Mermaid. Oh, people, people love Kronk. That's another one. That's another I mean, one that I saw that a lot. That one I totally get. Yeah, the, right. So you, you get it, you get it. That one I totally yeah, get. Yeah, hear me up. He's yeah. a himbo. Oh, now hold on. What does that mean? A himbo? Yeah. Can I get the official definition of himbo? Okay, and can I get the country of origin in, in, in a sentence, please? TikTok. Um, an attractive but unintelligent man. Oh, well, yeah. there's that. Uh, I feel like that could apply to a lot. Of yeah, they do use a cronk as an example. Oh my God. The OG himbo. The OG himbo. X-Men cartoons. That is a niche. That's a niche. X-Men cartoons. Um, um, there were several, if the, more than one girl that for sure. Like the blue one? Can we get a um, like uh, X-Men cartoon? I'll walk you through it. Okay. Uh, oh, what about any, anyone from Scooby Doo? Daphne? Daphne, maybe a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Also, do you remember like the way that they used to draw cartoons in our like childhood era? Yeah. All of them had a three inch waist and three triple D tits. Huge Just titties. massive boobies. Yeah. Uh, I would say. What about Totally Spies? You ever watched that one? That, had, that was oh, just hot that, girls. Who's that? This girl? No, far left, middle. Rogue. Oh. Yep. Her. Her? Yep. Definitely, not the blue one. Uh, this girl, Rogue, for sure. With the money pieces, she could have got it. She could have got it. Huh. Money pieces. Oh, or here money we, pieces. Here we go. Money pieces are. See how her slut strands are blonde. They're a different color. I wouldn't refer to them as that, but sure. Um, that's called a money piece. Uh, front. I was I was into money pieces at the age of seven. Hmm. Yeah. Well, wow, a man with taste. Oh, well, what can I say? Uh, I, there's definitely a few more from that, but de- that. Wow. That, yeah. I also think the one of the Powerpuff Girls could have for sure got it. Just can't remember which one. 
Well, what color did she wear? Green. Because they're, oh, um, oh, buttercup. buttercup. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, sporty. No, she wasn't the sporty one. She was the kind of like sassy one. Yep, that. I like a woman that could mistreat me for the rest of my life. I would say I relate to that one the least. Sick. Next. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, that didn't no, do it for me. No, no, no. Fairly Odd Parents. That wouldn't have been. It, that's not like animated in a way that is like. Um, oh yeah, X Men Evolution. That would have been the. Ex yeah, that. There, oh, there's Money Face oh, Girl. There's wait, Money stop, Face Girl. Stop, stop, stop. Actually, it wasn't her. It was Kitty. Hate that name. <laughs> which one? Which one is is Back Kitty? Middle, I think. Oh. I mean, okay. That's basically White U. Basically. Here we are. Here we are. Yeah, she could walk through walls. It's pretty cool. Sick. Yeah, I know. That's so wholesome. Wait, hold on. I have to look up like the most like popular Cartoon Network shows ever. There's gotta be more than this, but that 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 X-Men for sure. Um, Danny Phantom, I think is another popular one. Oh, Misty from Pokemon for sure could have got it. Oh, a redhead. She redhead? What? She was redhead? Misty, wasn't she? I mean, yeah. Whatever, yeah. Whatever she was, she could have got it for sure. I think you and mon many others have the Misty. Uh, yeah. That's for sure. Because when you Google her, there are some interesting oh, fan edits. Oh yeah. The amount of like Harry Potter porn is terrifying. I gotta be honest, seeing this um, green Powerpuff girl compared to the other ones, tastes do change. <laughs> Thank God. Thank God. Cause I would really say that I'm a combination of Blossom and, and Bubbles. Look at this Misty edit. <laughs> oh <laughs> my, yo Misty. Thick. Misty Thick for sure. Misty Thick. Yeah, Misty Thick. I remember the first, um, the very first time I, I was exposed, and I do mean exposed to uh, pornography. It was someone who had made a bunch of Pokemon and like Digimon and other like cartoon characters, all sexual. Oh and I remember my being God. like, this isn't, I don't know what it, what, this is what else do they have? actually looked like in the- Right, that, yeah, <laughs> that's- Okay. Wow, yeah, wow. They <laughs> really, really <laughs> exaggerated the proportions. Love, love Psyduck. I mean, I will also, say, shout I, out Saga. I, I thoroughly enjoy all of the um, quadruple D boobs that every AI nude, uh, fake nude of you that I've ever seen. Yeah. Always has. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, people aren't all that creative. Um, I'm trying to think of like the Disney characters, like the, the classic Disney princesses. I feel like uh, Jasmine, for sure, mm. for sure. But mm -hmm. she also was kind of walking around half topless all the time. Truly, yeah, like the little midriff like, out. Yeah, yeah. And I don't know how that would have worked on the, the carpet. Crop top. Like, can you imagine being on like a, a magic carpet ride in a string bikini? I saw someone hear me out. Magic carpet. Right. <laughs> Wait. Oh, just the carpet. <laughs> just the carpet. See, I know. Just I get the that. carpet. Yeah. Like that would be the ultimate <laughs> teen. Just the carpet. Uh, uh, can't wait to go after school on the carpet. Hang with carpet. Yeah, hang with carpet. <laughs> wow, that's. <laughs> Honestly, and by the way, it, it flies away. Independent. Genius. Can pick you up. It's basically the best license you could never have. Slay. And not to mention, only one of them. Only one of them? I would be like, can I borrow your carpet? Please, please. I promise I'll clean it. I'll, I'll take it to the right cleaners before I bring it back. I promise I'll do anything. I, I won't spill anything on it. I, please let me borrow the carpet. Would you go on the carpet with me? I'll go on the carpet with you. Really? Yeah. That's so nice. Uh, that's all I got. All right, Tillies, let's take a moment to reflect on something we all aim for. No matter how small they might seem, for me, it's about the little victories, like finally starting that morning jog or choosing water over soda. Come on, morning jogger. <laughs> or even organizing my desk. It's these bits of progress that add up, especially when it comes to our finances. Speaking of financial progress, have you checked on how your finances are doing this spring? Yeah, they're all going out to the wedding. They are literally all going to the Just wedding. one way, that way. If you're looking for a sign to start nurturing your credit score, let me introduce you to the Chime Secured Credit Builder Visa Credit Card. It's a game changer. Imagine a credit card that plants the seeds for your credit to grow by turning everyday buys into opportunities to build credit, all without the worry of annual fees or interest. The Chime Secured Credit Builder Visa Credit Card is not just another card. No annual fees or interest and no credit check is needed to get started. It's like having a financial buddy who's cheering you on as you use it everywhere Visa is accepted. Helping you grow your credit with your own hard-earned cash. Growing credit can be hard, and something like this is an easy place to start. There's even more to Chime than just the Credit Builder card. Picture getting your paycheck up to two days early with direct deposit. And for those times when life throws a curveball and your account's running low, Chime Spot Me can cover you for up to $200 on overdraft with zero fees. And for those of us who are always on the go, having access to over 60,000 fee-free ATMs is a total game changer. Plus, sending money with Chime? Effortless. Whether they're Chime members or not, it's easy and fee-free. Ready to give your finance 
financial health a spring makeover. It's about taking small steps towards big wins. And with Chime, you're in good hands. With Chime's secure credit card, you can start improving your credit scores right away. Get started at Chime.com slash WT9. That's Chime.com slash WT9. Feels like progress. The Chime Credit Builder Visa Credit Card is issued by the Bancorp Bank, NA or Stride Bank, NA members FDIC. Spot me eligibility requirements and overdraft limits apply. Out of network ATM withdrawal and OTC advance fees may apply. Terms and conditions apply. Go to chime.com slash disclosures for details. So I feel like we're kind of going to revisit something we already did maybe a year ago, two years ago. Uh, specifically episode 126. So we asked ourselves then some, I guess, important questions one might ask before getting engaged. <laughs> now we are engaged and are getting married. If all goes according to plan, mm -hmm. assuming you don't call it off after my- um, Shenanigans of the past yeah, weekend. Not so eloquent surprise uh -huh. uh, that's not even been delivered yet. Uh, and I think we should revisit them or at least revisit some of these questions. We've also done- couples therapy since doing these questions. We have. Yeah. I would I would go on a limb and say that, although I'm sure some of the things are similar, mm -hmm. I would have an appreciation for these questions that is, that would not have existed like Free. fundamentally. Yeah. Two years ago, year and a half ago. I 100% see that for you. That was the rudest way you could have answered <laughs> that. All right. 10 essential I'm questions saying, to ask before no, you get engaged. No, 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 before we start this, actually, you have done so much personal and like, it just personal and relationship growth in the past two years. You're you are a different person, in all the best ways. Thank you. No, but you know it's that's like crazy to have so much development over such a short period of time. Yeah, like you really put in the work. Like you've, I just feel like you've you've like really grasped and faced some difficult, you know, interpersonal conversations or whatever within yourself and in therapy. And you've made a lot of progress. Thanks, babe. And I want to acknowledge that. Appreciate it. I appreciate you. You're welcome. Like you're, you're a different person in in all of the right ways from who you were when I met you. And I would say that without question, it was a lot easier before. Okay, what are these questions? I disagree. <laughs> Maybe for you. Okay, so the first question is, how well do we currently handle the disagreements with each other? Go ahead. You start. Um, I think we, again, we've come so far. I think one of the biggest takeaways that we, um, or that I personally, I feel like took from doing the premarital course mm -hmm. that we did, which was six, two hour to three hour sessions. It was six. Whatever it was, it was like six, it was six like six di different topics. Yeah, to six cover. different like sections essentially. Um, I think the biggest thing that we took from that is focusing on slowing down. Mm. Um, and I think we've talked about this a little bit before, but like in conflict, I get really stuck. Like if my feelings, it, it, so just say the whole conflict is 10 squares long. If I get my feelings hurt on square two, I can't get to the resolution on ten, square 10. 10 conflict squares. What? There's 10 conflict squares we have to progress through. We have to progress right. through of the conversation to like work through all of the things that need to be talked about right. and like apologize and like how to did adequately this- adequately check off the list. Right, exactly. If I get my feelings hurt on square two, I can't progress to any other squares until right. square two is dealt with. Right. And there's not like a, oh, let's just hold on two and let's work on three, four, five, six, seven. Right. It's two. Right, 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 right. We will not move on to three until two is Until complete. two. Right. right, because then I feel like you're arguing about semantics and like my feelings are still heard or like, like we just, it's it's so easy to fight about the fight when yeah. they're, when you're, when you're not addressing the root cause. Yeah, agreed. Um, so I feel like, I feel like one of the biggest takeaways for me was like just slowing down because I feel like it's easy to just be like, cause obviously at the end of the day, like we love each other. We probably for the most part want the same thing. And there's things that need to be said on route to get there through all those 10 squares, those 10 conflict squares, yes. whatever they might be. But I feel like the way that we get there have in the past been different where you're down to jump from square two to square 10 yep. and you're frustrated why you're at 10 and I'm at two. And I'm mad that I feel like you're blowing over square two. Right. And in, in, in fact, to the point where the disagreement about the thing right. often becomes larger than the problem in the first place. Right. And then we're arguing about square two and not whatever started the conflict right. in the beginning. And this is one of those things where I think it's so easy to look at anybody else arguing about literally fucking mm -hmm. anything and being able to play like therapist and people go, oh, you're so good at this. But it's just so much easier when you're not the person who is upset. I think also too, like the more you, okay, not to be like, oh, you should argue more to get better at it. But I feel like the more, the more times practice you have, we've been able to apply what we've taken from the premarital course. I right. feel like we are better at handling conflict. 
and not only are we better, are we are we better at handling conflict? I feel like we're better at addressing things before it even becomes conflict. Yeah, I think the thing that I, uh, when I look at this question, I think of it in like two, as, as, as it pertains to me personally. I think that I have the capacity to be much better and much worse at you uh, at, at any one specific conversation. Like you, you are uh, nine out of 10 times, I feel like within a band that is more consistent of like of how you handle disagreements. That's true. And I have the capacity to come in with zero logic, only emotions, complete reactionary, just mm. uh, telling you exactly how I feel about the way that you said the one thing in that very specific niche part of the conversation and make that the full thing to talk about. Or I'm, uh, for whatever reason, being introspective that day and can go, you know what, actually, I think the problem is this, or I don't say anything and I come back later and I go, hey, I thought about this all day and here's kind of where I'm at. Mm -hmm. I don't wanna tell you what I feel. And then when we get done with that, I want you to tell me if, if that kind of resonates. So I feel like I have the capacity to be on both sides of this. Yeah. And it really just comes down to like, uh, it kind of, well, being more consistent, but also starting at the, the better half of it all the time. Yeah. But I do agree. The only way you get better at handling conflict mm -hmm. is practice. And you don't need to make a big conflict. It's just mm -hmm. finding anything you disagree about and being able to start and end that conversation as friends. Right. Okay, how much do you value time together versus time apart? I think this is another big one we've like had a lot of conversation around. What do you think? I mean, I think that there's a, I think that you can value how much time you have together versus time apart versus, but I think the better question is how do you value your time mm -hmm. and distribute that with or without your partner? And like specifically like when you're being intentional about like what you do and don't do with your partner, mm -hmm. like what are you intentionally doing by yourself to like not have anybody else with you or not have your partner with you versus always thinking about your partner and how much you guys enjoy doing something together? Like, I think it's, it's less about like value time together or apart. Like what are the things that you do with your partner? And what are the things that you do for yourself so that you can be the right partner? So that way, when you do go back and you are with your person, you're giving them your undivided mm -hmm. for me. Yeah. I mean, I, I feel like I'm, I've always done through all my relationships, I feel like the one thing that I, I've stayed pretty consistent with is like having um, not only like a solid balance with keeping my friendships, because there's just, you know, some people that they just lose themselves in relationships. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, it happens to, especially at the beginning of relationship, like I totally, you know, that that happens to everyone. Um, but I feel like I've always prioritized keeping solid relationships with friends and also solo time. I'm I'm an ambivert, I would say. I, my social battery is not unlimited and I definitely need kark time, carcass time. You do. To recharge. And so like there are definitely times where I need to just like do a day by myself or do an activity by myself, whether it just be like going to Pilates by myself or whatever. Like I truly enjoy alone time. And I also, I, and I think we are, we very quickly got to a point where I can still recharge with you um, even if we're just carking together. I think that the the thing that me and a lot of other guys struggle with is just to your point that when you get into a relationship, mm -hmm. disappearing from your friends, the thing that I think I used to struggle with most or I would use as an excuse is the type of behavior you you typically uh, exhibit when you're with your college friends or your high school friends or yeah. just like your friends when you're not as mature as, as a reason to not spend time with them is a wonderful excuse, but it's not actually the full picture. It's like, how are you positioning yourself with the people that you are close to that you want to spend time with, with or without your partner, mm -hmm. that do activities that actually uh, bring you closer to the person that you want to be. And so I think it's less about like how you value your time, but like how you value your time in general with or without your partner and the types of activities you like to do intentionally with or without your partner. How often will we see our family once we're married? Well. Um, I, I mean, I feel, I feel like we see my family probably every couple of months. I mean, your mom's very good at not waiting yeah. for you to, we should get it together. Like she's, she's planning the year. Totally, totally. Ahead. Well, I feel year like before, we have like always. a pretty solid idea of like what months, and like we've gotten into a great routine of like what months they come here, what months we go yep. there, um, and like what works for everyone. And so I feel like, I think it's also easier too when not only they are both, 
um, mostly retired and they could afford it. And I'm also an only child, you know what I mean? So it's like, I get all of the travel attention time. Um, so I think that we are in a really great situation to be able to see each other as much as we would like to, which is amazing. Yeah. Um, but no, I think that both sides have made it a priority. I think especially after COVID, after going so long without seeing my family was so fucking hard that it, that, that like will just like always be, that was such a great wake up. I feel like for so many people to be like, family is a priority. Like when, when you've had that taken away and then yeah. given back, it feels even more like a, like a luxury and like something that should be prioritized. I mean, I think yes, but I also think that it was a big wake up call to a lot of people realizing just how easy it is to fall into the trap of not seeing anybody and just falling into that as well. Oh, totally, yeah. totally. I mean, I think because like, I just literally couldn't legally cross the border during COVID is right. like what I mean by that. Is that right. like, I had that like right revoked for that time. True. I mean, I, I'm i not gonna sugarcoat it. I don't think my mom, my mom will be at the wedding. I don't think she'll participate. Mm -hmm. She's invited. It, it's not anything that we want, but that's her decision. So I think this is a conversation that for me, and it's very timely, I don't know how much we'll see my mom after we're married, sadly. Yeah. Uh, I know you don't want to comment on it. Yeah. And I know you feel uncomfortable and you know, so do I to a degree, but it, it's a certain thing where I'm, I'm done trying to, I feel like put up a front for parts of my family that don't agree with whatever goes mm -hmm. on in my life. And at a certain point, you kind of have to get into the, like the routine of not living multiple existences for mm -hmm. family members who might mean well, but they're, input and their influence on you is not healthy. So I, this is, it, I think it's a really important question because for me and for a lot of people who I think want to be close to their family, but there's just some recurring yeah. family. I mean, it's crazy. Every family has like, it's so common to have like, you know, shit, drama. Yeah. I, I think the, it'll be interesting to see how often we'll see both of our families once we're married in a world where everything becomes a little bit more, I don't know, uh, not triggering yeah. and not so loaded, but uh, it'll be interesting. I, I, I don't know how yeah. often we'll see my family. I think also too, like you've got some family that are showing up for you big time for the wedding. Huge. And I think that we should really make an effort to see them and go to them over the next year. Yeah. And maybe there's some like new things we can start with like that part of the family as well too. Maybe, maybe, maybe. maybe. So we'll see. What if we're not able to have biological children? How would you want to deal with fertility issues? What if we have a miscarriage? Thoughts on IVF? Thoughts on adoption? So we've talked about adoption because Jeremy is adopted. Hi. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> um, and we also know that Jeremy's uh, side of the family is incredibly fertile, fertile mm. myrtles. We are- Up I, in this hoe. I can't, I don't, I'm the first person to get married prior to having a child. Congratulations, Naiva. I am aware of. That is so exciting for you. Thank you. Congratulations. I mean, still time. Um, The timeline actually really just doesn't actually match up. So you, there, there, there truly is not time. Got it. Okay. Um, well, then I guess we'll just anyway, have beat that. Congratulations. You Thank did you. it. Thank um, you. You did it. So, I mean, how do you feel about this? Um, I mean, I feel as if it's like, I feel like I've just watched so many girls start to go through fertility issues. Um, and it's absolutely heartbreaking it is yeah. it's so, it, there's such a heavy toll on the body. I think to go through a lot of this process, um, you know, whether it be a miscarriage or whether it be through doing like all the injections and putting your body through those, all those cycles. Um, Kelsey was on the podcast not too long ago was talking about it and like listening to her talk about like her recovery period was like rough. It's, it's not an ideal situation to be in and not everyone has the luxury of just like, you know, doing it the old fashioned way. And no. so obviously if we are so lucky as to be able to do it the old fashioned way, like that will be amazing and will be so great. Um, but I mean, I think the first thing to do is to um, get our fertility measured is probably the first thing yeah. post wedding is that we can like just do a check to see where we're at. We should do a better job of documenting that and finding ways to share good information for that. I have, I mean, Kelsey's best friend is yeah. the head of that fertility clinic. So right. we have we have friends in great places who can help us. Great. Um, but I, I mean, I think it's I think it's impossible to speak on what having a miscarriage is like. I think there is nothing that could ever put me in a place aside from experiencing myself to be able to speak to it. And yeah. so like, I don't feel like I'm in a place to be like, well, this is what we would do because I just, I cannot fathom 
the pain and the loss that comes along with that. N neither could I. But I will say that this is a perfect example of if anyone tries to do this portion like alone or as two individuals, I don't think it would work. I think this would be enough to destroy any relationship. Oh yeah, absolutely. If you're not like operating as a team. But also there's, there's a level of, um, I think, internalized guilt that men are never going to understand with this, that they might try. Oh, I see what you mean, yeah. Yeah, yeah I in just, loss. If just sort of uh, me not being, me not being fertile, mm -hmm. right? Like obviously that could be the thing and then I could maybe feel some type of way about myself, but just sort of like my sperm not having the capability of producing a child, it's out of my hands mm -hmm. physically. Literally. The moment it's like, right. the moment we're done having literal it's sex, out of your it's done. And so like, obviously there's support and there's so many things you can like do to try and augment that. But at mm -hmm. the end of the day, I am not going to be the reason that it is impossible or or does not like yeah. move forward. And that would be such a awful thing to not be able to share with you. Yeah, right, right, right. Like it would feel very like solo. Because you, you'd feel alone, I think. Even if you believed me 100% that like I, mm -hmm. I, I felt, awful. There was no part of me that felt like, oh, if I was with somebody else, this wouldn't be an issue. Even mm -hmm. if you like fully understood that, I still don't think that there's a world where you could completely just like block that out, accept that for what it is and like yeah. not let that least tug on you a little bit. Totally. I mean, as far as miscarriages and IVF and adoption go, what do you think? I mean, I think we just spoke on miscarriage, but like for IVF, I think having the option to do that and the science behind all the fertility stuff is crazy. Yeah. I think that we are so lucky to be living in an era where that is an option um, because it also gives us the flexibility to extend the timeline of when yeah. we're able to have kids, which is something that, you know, years ago was not an option. So I'm so grateful to be in this century. It's crazy how far we've come yet how not far. Yeah. Yeah. That, no, that too. For sure. That yeah. too, for sure. Because all of this is still like a big question mark Yeah, for everybody. Totally. And Obviously, I, I think everything's on the table for us until it's not, yeah. but I, oddly enough, and I, I've said this before, I have like a real, uh, you would think that I would be more interested in wanting to adopt to someone who's adopted, mm -hmm. whose f family is filled with adoptions, but there's like a part of me that just really has this um, interest in the old fashioned way. That feels if, normal If though. I can do it. Yeah, that feels normal, like based I, on your experience. Well, my experience is all adoption. But, that, that's what I'm saying is like based on your experience right. to like want what you didn't have. Like that makes that makes so much sense, I feel like. Right, right. So we'll see. I'm, I, and, and by the way, it wouldn't be that I was against adoption by mm -hmm. either. Like I actually think that as I get older, I understand where that could be potentially a better outcome. Mm -hmm. But I would like to at least go through the motion and see if we can do it the old fashioned way first before. Guys, he just wants to literally go through the motions. That's the real answer. That's all we have time for today. We'll see you guys later. <laughs> Okay, next. How do you see kids fitting into our life? I mean, we've got two of them. Currently don't. Four legs. I, this, this exact thing, actually it's, it's becoming clear to me just how never ready, never prepared, never like, I just don't think any dude is, is thinking about how they're going to uh, shift their schedule ahead of time. Like, I think it's like, a, oh shit, I need to change some things right now. But like, I see that. I'm starting to see that more than ever in the sense of, mm -hmm. you're never gonna be ready, but there is a time where it's too late or it's like, right. you should have started this earlier. Yeah. And that part I feel like is, is becoming clearer and clearer to me. Wow, he's maturing. Well, let's not say that. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> I mean, I, I feel like because I do most of the dog related things, mm -hmm. I can see how it could be not obviously the same because the needs are very different, but I can see how the routines can be, you know, like there are some routinely patterns within within that, you know, between like feeding, taking them to daycare, taking them to doctor's appointments. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like it's it's like kid version light. Yep. It's obviously not the same. And I totally understand that. Um, Cause I, I feel like I can't grasp the responsibility and the level of care that goes into tending to a literal child. But I do feel like there are some good routines that, prep you for having a 100% dependent. Yeah. Because that's what moves in Diggy are. Well, Incredibly dependent. <laughs> I feel like Diggy has given me a better window into this. Cause like Moose. Moose is pretty independent. There's something about, well actually, there's something about having a, a living. Uh, a little guy. A little guy that at the end of the day, when you haven't, 
when, when you're gone mm -hmm. and when I'm in charge for just Moose or Moose and Diggy, at the end of the day, when I would feed Moose and if I haven't had enough time to like really be there like throughout the day enough, Moose gives me this look of like, oh, it's good to see you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you're, oh, you're still here? Oh, you'll, you'll be feeding us today? Oh, this was oh. your excuse of parenting for today? What time is it? Oh, it, that's pretty close. It's only four hours. Like, like he gives me that look of like, yeah. just, oh, so this is the- Oh, nice of you to arrive. This is the way that you'll be doing this? Hmm. Whereas, which is like fine. And, and I feel bad. It's my fault, whatever. Diggy, on the other hand, there's something about when you don't do what you know you should have done. Like you did not show up in the way that you would have wanted to or that you would be proud of. And when he looks at you with this look of, Pure joy, oh, pure excitement, sweet. Diggo. No negativity whatsoever. It it actually resonates more in the sense of y you're willing to look past my oh. bullshit when I couldn't find a time today to like interrupt whatever the fuck I was doing to like take time out of whatever it was to give you time. But I, I think that moose is a more accurate depiction though because baby's gonna scream. Totally. When baby wants something, baby scream. When I, moose wants something, moose scream. I guess for me, <laughs> the things that like make me question my behavior mm -hmm. are not when like someone reminds me of why my behavior wasn't what I wanted it to be. Sure. It's when I question my behavior. And so it's like when I see Diggy fully willing to give me all the love in the world and nothing's ever wrong, whatever. Mm -hmm. And I realize I could have been there. I could have done this at a time that was a little bit more convenient for him or a little bit better or like made more time or made a, a better effort at like finding more of myself to give to him because he deserves it. That's a much more impactful way for me to be like, hmm, okay. So I think though, that the baby is not gonna know how to manipulate you into thinking like that. So maybe- Sure, but in the same, <laughs> but in the same capacity, the thing that I think has made me rethink this more than anything mm -hmm. is not anything you've said outside of the fact that you've now become more interested in freezing your eggs. And all, in the back of my mind, all I think about is, oh, she sees that I am not able to prioritize currently well enough mm. so that like, that's why she's even thinking about it in the first place. Therefore, I need to make a change. Interesting. Yeah. But if you had told me that I need to start figuring my shit out because we're never going to be able to be parents with my current schedule. Right. I would tell you to thank you for your opinion. I will get back to you with like, with my adjustments. Like, I mean, it, it that, wouldn't that never even crossed my mind. But like you not saying that yeah. and being interested all of a sudden is enough for me to be like, hmm, okay. Huh, interesting. Yeah. Interesting. So what does commitment mean to you, Lauren? Um, well, Harami, commitment means to me. <laughs> um, I mean, fucking shit. I don't even know where to start with this. Commitment. It's, I would say like the most synonymous description for me is just like loyalty. Okay. And uh, you know what? A combination of loyalty and prioritization <sighs> is mm. what, what commitment feels like to me. Okay. I. Okay. Yeah. I don't know if I would, I don't know if I would. What words would you use? Uh, I think it's like um, an ongoing opt-in button. Like you can't just opt in once. Mm -hmm. Like you have to keep doing it. Yeah. It, it's like the, the reminder on your phone that you wish would just like, no, you can have my location info. It kind of has to like ask you several times throughout a day or a week or w whatever. And you keep having to like, yes, I still want to do, yes, you still have this. Right, you're it choosing. Can't, it's not a, a passive activity. No, agreed. Okay, so let's let's rephrase. Okay, so it's consistent loyalty and prioritization. Yes, but it's yeah, prioritization for sure, but it's an openness for me. An openness. Yeah. That almost feels like the opposite of commitment. Sure, but like if I'm committed to you, uh -huh. and you change. Okay. And you shift. The things that like you need or are interested in are no longer what they were a year ago, sure. 5 years ago. I now have a choice to say, I was committed to you when what you were interested in or what you needed fit my profile. It's like a flexibility openness. Yeah, mm -hmm. but like it's an openness to like, so it's it, it's an ongoing commitment, but it's an, it's an openness to- Be flexible. Being okay with and listening and also like proactively almost, uh, getting ahead of mm -hmm. the things that come up or the things that shift or the things that like inform us right. that change the way that we seek commitment from the other person. In sickness and health. Right, but we're just doing just health, right? We're not doing the sickness part, right? Totally. Okay, good. Totally. But like, and obviously there's, like, there's, there's ways that this goes haywire and it's not interesting, but there, to me, in a, in a world where you 
10 years into our relationship, mm -hmm. cheated on me, I would have to really question what brought you there. Because I don't see you as somebody who has an issue with commitment or mm -hmm. loyalty. So it's totally. like, I almost need to be thinking to, like, to myself, like, what, what was it that happened however many years ago that led to this? Right. And it's like, not that like, I, I, you can cheat on me in 10 years and it's okay. I guess the, the thought is like, <laughs> the things that you need today are not going to be the exact same forever. Right. And anybody who goes, that's not the person I got into this relationship with, that's not this. And it's like, sure, that that can be a good thing. Like, that's not the person you were. And I loved that part about you. Mm -hmm. But there's also a part about like, hey, you've changed, you've grown, you need more different things. And I still am committed to that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. There's a quote that really encompasses, I think, what Jeremy's yeah. saying. And it's, um, to love someone long-term is to attend a thousand funerals of the person they used to be. Yeah. Oh, that's so nice. It's true. Yeah. But like, I, I just don't think that anybody who puts their partner in a box or can define their partner mm -hmm. and think that that definition is going to maintain for the rest of that person's life. Totally, it's not realistic. It's not like, I feel like that's what we kind of do. And I feel like we all have friends who are like, well, he's just changed so much. It's like, that's good. Is Did it change in the wrong way? No, but that's what I'm saying is that yeah. you've changed so much in all the right ways. Right, but maybe I'll change in wrong ways and then you still have to be committed to me. Yeah, but I'm gonna be like, okay, remember that time that you had changed in all the right ways? Let's find that well, guy again. Whatever, whatever to that. Let's find that guy. <laughs> it's fair, yeah. How do you expect to get sexual needs met? I'm gonna send a Cal invite. Mm. If you, you forgot the, the last part. For 9.30, there's, there's, there's if, there's if, another, if there's I'm another. not meeting them. Right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna send the Cal invite for 9.30 PM on a Friday night. Got it. Uh, okay, I, I, I wanna hear your thoughts. I'm gonna send the Cal invite. <laughs> So how do you expect to get your, like, your needs met? Or, or that's the calendar invite? That's the calendar invite. Got it. No, no, I, but like the real answer is like communication, I think is the yeah. number one thing is communication. And then I think the next step is like prioritizing intimacy, whether that be like literal sex every single time or just like creating the possibility for that through intimate plans. And also like the openness of like letting situations like unfold, but mm -hmm. also putting yourself in positions that situations can unfold. Right, exactly, that's what I mean. Yeah. Is that like creating the time for that and prioritizing that I think is important. But the like little sub point here, the, you know, opening the door, sharing views on masturbation, pornography, consensual non-monogamy, uh, open marriages. I mean, that's, there's a lot of hot button topics there. Um, I feel like all of these though, center around communication. Agree. But it's an internal communication and it's an external communication. Because I think a lot of dudes like really suffer with pornography. Oh my God, yeah. And not that it's just a guy problem by any means. And in fact, I think the worst position to probably be in would be a woman who is addicted to pornography with one-tenth the resources mm -hmm. that the guys probably do. Right. One-tenth, uh, one-hundredth. Mm -hmm. But I mean, the, I feel like there's a, uh, there's, there's a, a, there's a way to go overboard on any of these one things, but also like finding a way to identify and define and communicate what all of that is for you guys. Yeah, and I think whatever feels comfortable within the relationship, because some girls are are yeah. fine with pornography, some of them are totally not. And so I think it's just like understanding what feels like a um, breach of trust, I guess, yeah. in, within your own relationship. Yeah, I agree. I mean, yeah, this is one where I feel like they're, there should, there should be more and more discussion around it. And we did, I feel like we talked about it quite a bit during our, our pre-couple marriage ceremony. Yeah. And I feel just like open marriage is probably not for us. I don't think that would work for us. I don't think that would work for us either. <laughs> I don't either. think that would work for us either, yeah. I think that one's in the cards for us. Yeah, not for us. <laughs> How will we prioritize romance once we're married? Mm. Go ahead. This reminds me of like the, like the, the saying like, like when you've already broken up with somebody and it didn't like work out well, like the thought that like flowers are cheap in the sense of, it's not that flowers are inexpensive. It's just that the action of going and getting mm -hmm. flowers mm -hmm. seems so inexpensive when yeah. you no longer have the option to do so. Right. And I think there's like that, I don't know why that always like resonates with me, but it's this like sense of at any given time when you don't need to make a gesture, mm -hmm. that's the time to make the gesture. Like not waiting for the holiday, not waiting for the event, like, mm -hmm. or when your partner's sad for whatever reason, going above and beyond with a, 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 a distraction to that in a way that just shows that you care in a way that is one, nice and special, but also it almost like activates a part, at least for me, I wanna be able to do a thing for you mm -hmm. that I know 
only I can do. Right. And it's like, that's not, but it, it's on me to realize that in real time. I had, like when you don't need to do it to like go through those steps to like make it happen and, and prioritize that mm. so that you continue to see that part of me. I think also prioritizing and understanding each other's love languages is probably big for this one. Say it's like more. If you are delivering, it, like if you're like, delivering what you feel like is so much like love, attention and romance, but that's like not actually how the person successfully and efficiently absorbs it. Yeah. Like that's just a lost cause for both right. of you. And you're just like not, you're not connecting. I also think that it's, that can also be a point of contention when people do things almost as like gestures that they know is not the thing that that's like- That's not what they- Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. almost feel like I, I, I have a few buddies who, uh, to continue to do things or receive things that like don't really resonate. Yeah. And then it becomes that like, it's almost like a, you thought this was helpful or like, yeah. you, you thought the, like that communication, understanding. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Whose career would take precedence if it became necessary? Who's got the better bennies? Mm, true. I mean, this is a hard one. It's a really hard one. I mean, I think it also comes down to like, is it, because the other partner has like a health issue or right. is it because the other partner is taking care of the child or is there a family issue that needs to be dealt with by one specific person? Yeah. Because I think it's hard to think hypothetically about a situation where it's like, okay, if you can only pick one career, what's it gonna be? I think it like very much depends on like what the other side of the coin is. I also think that this is, if you have to think about it in terms of whose career will take precedence, you're already, too late. Right. Like, it's almost like a whose willingness or whose capacity mm -hmm. to take on a different role or uh, to, to understand that the other person is providing something that is unique to the relationship that like yeah. cannot be created. Yeah, right. That's what I'm saying is yeah. that like, yeah, like it depends, it depends what the other person is doing. Yeah. Cause like I've definitely taken too much of a backseat in previous like just relationships. Mm -hmm. Obviously we're not married. We weren't doing this. So like, you know, me and exes that like, I I think did too much prioritization for the other person in weird professional ways mm -hmm. was nothing but an awful experience to go through. Yeah. So I really do think it comes down to like, how will you continue to prioritize a shared goal and making sure that you both are on the same page about the shared goal right? versus whose job is going to get right, the- Right, it's like, if the shared goal is to give Moose and Diggy the best life in the entire world right. possible, right. it's like- okay, well, like, how can we make enough money to make that sustainable, but also but, give them the most attention possible? Totally. And also understanding the limitations and the just built-in uh, pros and cons, I feel like of any situation. And who got the bennies? It really does come down to like, are you both working towards the same thing? Yeah. And if not, like, if you are, it should be a much easier, I feel like, decision mm -hmm. than a, 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 a measuring contest. Right. Ooh, are you committed to counseling if and when we need it? Oh my God, yeah, couples therapy was so great. Uh, yeah, I mean. And I, can, and I just wanna be clear, I cannot speak that same experience to all of the couples therapy that I have done in the past. Did you wanna share some, some no, thoughts? No, that's okay. But I do think that like for counseling to be, for counseling to be successful, you need to both be so committed and both be so willing to be open. Um, I, I think it's the same with individual therapy too. It's like the more that you put into it, the more that you're gonna get back. I mean, I think it's a great litmus test to like see how your partner yeah. deals with, can, I feel like, deal or internalize or leverage, not criticism, but another perspective. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's so difficult until you go through the experience to provide that perspective for your partner, like mm -hmm. personally, I, I don't know. I'm sure there are some couples that can do it. But if you told me everything that I've thought through in the last year, and it was coming from you and only you, I don't know if I would have heard it. Right, no, totally, totally. So mm, it's like I hearing heard it, it. I don't know if I would have listened. Listen, exactly, that's what it is. Is that like hearing something from a new perspective and a new person, especially who's gotten unbiased, like, well, that's that's what they're supposed to have is an unbiased opinion um, can be hard. And that's yep. like a hard and uncomfortable confrontation that I think can be a either a point of growth or a point of contention that just drives that relationship into the ground. I also think though that there's like for, for people like me and for guys who I think have a tendency to place a lot of stock almost in the values that they think are well-founded. Mm -hmm. And uh, I am the way I am because of this. 
they don't even think about the this anymore. It's just, I, I am this way. And or they like, just this accepted is, it. Yeah, right. exactly. They feel, they feel like they've just accepted their fate and they have no power in changing it. And it's very easy to look at that person and go, how short-sighted of them yeah. and how stupid and how uh, you know immature. But on the flip side of that, it's like, if that is all they know, give them the opportunity to come up with the words mm -hmm. to explain why it is that the way, you know, why they are the way they are. And for me anyway, half the time I feel like I get like half the way through explaining myself to, you know, a, a, a counselor and I, I can already hear the words coming back at me and I, or like, I want to adjust. I'm like, no, 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 this is the truth. This is how I feel. Mm -hmm. I can already hear what you're going to say, but like, I, I, and I, I don't even agree with myself and I'm not even finished with the thought. Right. But had I not been forced to almost think through it and like come up with the words, I wouldn't have thought about it. Right. Yeah. Because that old phrase, push it down. Push it down. Push it down. Just push it down. And then when you think it's done, just keep going and going and then lock and throw it away. And push it down a little more. Yeah. I mean, getting married to you has been a marathon emotionally in the best of ways. Do you want to maybe pair that with something nice? <laughs> uh, no, you, you, um, I think you're very, the things that you are uh, more in tune with than me internally mm -hmm. um, created a wonderful canvas for me to have to like go through the motions of like filling out for the first time. Right, right, right. That's what I'm saying. Personal growth, babe. Thanks, babe. You're so welcome. Thanks. You're so welcome. And you too. Yeah. Well, like you, you're more, I feel like you're generally more open to people's differences and how they interface with you than I am. And mine are unique and fun and, and uh, challenging in all the you know ways that they are. But I feel like you do a very good job of um, immediately being okay with whatever they are versus my perspective. Wait, what do you mean? Like you're, you're very good at being okay with people who would frustrate the shit out of me. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. I feel like I accept. Um, yeah, you're right. I, I have, <laughs> I, I just have, I would say I'm a generally more patient person than you are. Uh, unless, unless you're not. Until I'm not. In fact, I would say that we, our patience is probably one of the most definingly different characteristics. Yeah, I agree. Because like the things that I can find patience for that you just cannot, yeah. that I find infuriating, infuriating in, in its own right. Mm -hmm. But I also like- but I think this also pairs with your ADHD though. Totally. Because I think totally. when you're in a wormhole of whatever the task is, your patience is unlimited. When it, when I feel like it's questioning my competency. Right. And for you, you don't find- You've got the time. I, I am of the opinion, if it's 80% good, send it. Right, yeah. 75, and send it. Where's the cutoff? 69. And see, here's the deal. <laughs> in Canada, that's still like a, a B. Yeah. Maybe a C. Thank you so much. It's like an F. I'll take uh, it's a pass for sure. I think on the eight point system that that's an F. I don't know what that means. Not ten, eight. 90, um, Ninety three is the end of the A's. I know it's not fun. What? I know. What do you mean? But what if you get a what if you get a ninety six? That that would be an A or a minus. Huh? Wait. You're telling me that a ninety six would be an A minus? She'll pull up to the eight point grading scale. That is a blasphemy. I know. I know. And like seventy six D. Are you, 76, I'm stoked. I'm pretty sure it's a D. A high 70? Let's go, like elated. 90, 92, B. That's fucked. I know. Um, Yeah, 100 to 93 yep. is an A. 92 to 90 is an A minus. 89 yeah. to 88 is a B plus. So where's C start? C starts at 79. Okay, and then. Huh? Oh, well C starts at 77. A C plus is 79. So 79 is a C though. Yeah. What's okay. fail? Well, it's weird because in America, a D is a fail, but in Canada, a D is not a fail. I know. What? Yeah. And then like for like certain university programs, you have to keep above a C average. Right. Like for like my, the college of business where I went to, you couldn't get all C's and graduate. Huh? I know, I know. The whole like C's get degrees thing, D's get degrees thing, didn't really work. It, it worked for me in one of my classes. I got a 51%. Yeah, that's all you need to Did pass. You pass, pass fail? Yeah, it's a pass. Yeah. Well, hold on. 51 is not pass though. In Canada, in Canada it is. 51 is a pass? It's a D. That, that makes that's fucking sense because 50 is the halfway. If you're below half, that's fail. I'm like a, a doctor in Canada. <laughs> yes, you are. Yeah, and I'm not, no. That makes no sense. That well, makes the babe, most sense. I it's get, very similar to the whole idea of how zero is freezing. Okay, well, I want to get <laughs> an American A in our relationship. 
and that we can strive for. No, do you agree? Yeah. Okay, good. I just don't know what number that is. Ninety three and up. Okay. We can be the ninety three, like ninety third percentile. Percentile, I think yeah, we do. right. Mm. Okay, that was fun. Yeah. What else is going on this week? Um, Anything to know? I mean, just getting my my tofens fixed. Well, I'm thrilled to be back from my surprise, which I surprise. delivered so poorly. And I'm, I'm gonna continue to show gratitude for. <laughs> okay, everybody. So Latvia, thank you so much for listening. Um, I'm, a, I'm gonna get out of here too. Well, so. till next. <laughs> Bye guys, see you next week. <laughs>